welcome back to my channel my name is Vera and in today's video I'm going to be setting up my March spreads in my bullet journal it has been a hot minute since I last posted a video I have been enjoying my time here in Mauritius as you can see behind me tropical palm trees and everything but I figured it's time to post my March plan with me so I asked in my community to have what you guys thought my theme was going to be whether it's going to be sharks seahorses, turtles or octopus and a lot of you voted for turtles and a lot of you voted for seahorse but alas I'm going to be doing the theme of octopus of this month. What even is the plural of octopus? Octopi? Octopuses? I don't even know. Let me know down in the comments because I clearly cannot remember. But before we even get into that, let's have a quick flip through of my February spreads. February's theme was a stingray theme and it was a romantic rays series that I really absolutely loved. I love all the spreads in this one and I think they're so cute. I like the idea of putting the rays in a red color or a pink color because you know it strays from the normal and it makes it more fun and I really like it. Also in this video I'm a little bit stuffy. I am currently sick. <laughs> As you saw my February spreads were pretty empty. That's because I filmed that part when I first set it up and then I started using it. Except for this month I pretty much didn't use my bullet journal like at all because I don't know, I was too busy living life. And so I actually don't have much to put into those spreads, which you will see when I end up doing my yearly flip through at the end of the year anyway. So let's start off with my cover page today. It is an octopus that I have copied off of Pinterest. I'm gonna insert the picture here. And I'm just going to be painting it with watercolors. So this month again, it's watercolors, but the color that I'm going for is blue. The techniques that I'm using is supposed to be kind of like a wet on wet, but I'm putting a base color down first. And because I'm working in a very hot and sunny things dry very very fast so I actually have to go over this with more water so that I can achieve the wet on wet effect so as you can see I go back in with some more water and now I'm gonna start adding little drops of darker blue in certain areas of this octopus so that it kind of like gives it more of a 3d dimension and it's not really flat and I think it looks pretty effective also the idea is copied off of this Pinterest post as well so not my idea but I really liked it and I think I somehow adapt it to my own style a little bit. I don't know if you could say that, but technically it's copied and then I'm, I've just recopied it is the basis of this painting. <laughs> so let's continue on with me adding some dark spots to the legs. So again, when things dry, I just splash some water with the paintbrush onto the area that I'm currently working on. And then I add in some darker splotches of blue. I'm gonna make sure that I have all of my eight limbs as well for my octopus. And then I'm gonna go in with a blue watercolor pencil to start giving it some more definition so specifically so that you can see the little suctiony parts of the tentacles on the octopus except for I don't end up being too happy with the blue watercolor pencil so I'm going to try with some watercolor you're gonna see that I don't particularly like that either and then I'm gonna go in with a black pen later to go over everything anyway but yeah this is what it kind of looks like so far and I really like how it's turning out I think that the little suctiony parts could have been done a little bit better. I'm also going to write March down the bottom and 03 at the top. Now, something special about March, it's my birth month. March is a very special month to me, obviously, because I'm born on the 31st of March and the octopus is my favorite sea creature. One highlight from one of my dives that I did whilst here in Mauritius was an 80 minute dive where there were these two octopus and they were mating, or at least that's what I think they were doing. It looked like they were mating and it was so interesting to see and all of us divers would just kind of staring at them. I don't know if you would consider that weird or fascinating or I don't know, but it was an experience that I'd never seen before. Like sometimes you'll see it in a documentary and I love ocean documentaries, but there's something about seeing something in real life that is just, it's so different and it's so amazing. Anyway, after some last details, I'm going to turn the page and I'm going to move on to my monthly log. Now, if you know me, you know that I've been raving about the vertical monthly log for months. However, this month I figured I would go back to the calendar spread. Why? I don't know. I think I'm getting a bit bored of the vertical one and I want to spice things up again. So I decided to go back in with a calendar spread and this time my monthly log is going to be accompanied by my habit tracker down the bottom and a small note section on the side. I'm going to trace out most of the lines for the monthly log first and then I'm going to draw or paint shall I say my octopus which you can already see the pencil markings for at the 
top left corner. I'm also going to write March and 03 before I get started. So as you can see, it's the same method. It's going to be repeated multiple times. I think one of the notes that I would add for painting octopus is that letting it dry between each of the tentacles, especially if the tentacles overlap, is important so that they don't blend together. Which, as you know, that I'm impatient, so I don't always tend to wait and sometimes they blend together. But I think this one looks particularly awesome. Again, copied off another Pinterest post, which I'll insert here. This one just, it looked so cool. I really liked how groovy or movie the tentacles are. And I think it's very effective. Now, one thing you don't see me do in this particular painting is the membrane between the tentacles, which I actually do in the end, but I didn't film it. So you'll just have to see it in the flip through at the end. Let's move on back to the more functional aspects of this spread. So I'm going to draw some lines for the notes section over here on the right. Now, why am I drawing lines? Don't know. Then on the bottom, I'm going to do my habit tracker. This month, I'm going for a horizontal habit tracker. So I'm just going to write one through 31 at the bottom or like underneath the calendar. And then I'm going to start drawing some lines. I think I'm going to track roughly five to eight different habits this month. I haven't entirely determined them, but I will come back to the habits that I track later on because I didn't film all of this in one go. So by the time I actually come around to it, it's approaching March. So I have had more time to think about what I want to track. I'm drawing out the lines horizontally first and then I'm extending them past the numbers so that I can write the habits on the lines. And then I'm going to draw lines vertically so that I can split my weeks as well. So it kind of looks like this. Now, I feel like it's a very busy page and in the end, I'm not entirely sure if I like it or not. I think it's a bit too busy, but you know, details. Now that we've done that, I will come back to this page because I haven't quite finished it, but I'm moving on to my weekly spreads and my master to-do list. Now, another thing that I'm doing this year in March is Laps for Life. If you were subscribed to my channel last year, March, you will know that I did the same thing last year, where basically I am swimming laps in a pool to raise money and awareness for youth mental health in Australia. Now, if you're interested in donating to my campaign, you can find the link down in the description below. I also talked about this in a couple of other videos recently, but I am trying to raise 750 Australian dollars this year. Last year, I raised just over $500. And so I'm kind of upping the challenge, shall we say. Youth mental health is a very special cause to my heart as a person who has struggled with mental health difficulties throughout my teen years. It's a cause that I fully support and fully stand behind. And so if you wanted to donate, that would really mean a lot to me. Another thing that's big for me is swimming. As you know, I do talk about this quite a lot. I love swimming. I love anything to do with water. So a campaign like this where I'm swimming laps to save lives is really meaningful to me. So I hope you join me for this challenge. I'll come back to laps for life again later, but let's come back to these spreads. This month I'm going for some Dutch doors as well as some tabs, and I'm actually going to cut out weekly spreads in the center of my journal. I've already started as you can see, and the idea is that I'm going to have several pages that kind of flip over in in the middle. I'm going to have octopus designs on the sides. And the idea, which I pretty much regretted immediately, was that every time you flip the page, you're gonna see the same octopus on that page. So we had to paint it multiple times. It's a cool idea in theory. It's a cool idea to look at but it is not a cool idea to do in real life. So if you're going to imitate this kind of idea, I don't necessarily recommend trying to paint octopus on several pages, especially when you have to copy them because it gets tedious. But if you do want to, follow along. So once I cut out all of my tabs, you can actually see the octopus that I'm going to be illustrating. There are two of them actually. So I added more work for myself. So I'm just going to start painting the octopus. So I'm gonna start doing this at a different angle now because you've been watching me overhead and I think it's kind of cool to see the painting process from a side angle. So let's have a look at the top octopus here. This is the main octopus and she is my favorite. Her name is Stacy. Don't know why I said that, just kind of came out of my head. I'm going to use a bigger brush this time because more water, it dries slower, should I say, 
and so hopefully I get the desired effect but probably have to re-wet the page several times anyway. So the idea here is I'm using the pencil markings underneath to form out the tentacles and the octopus itself. As a base layer I'm not worrying too much about colors blending in because most of these colors will be deepened with pigment so I don't really have to worry too much about them blending at this first stage. When you're painting with watercolors it's important to obviously have your pencil markings so that you know what you're painting unless you can do it without the pencil mark in which case awesome but one thing that you should know is that when you paint over pencils specifically lead pencils it kind of traps the lead pencil underneath the painting which means that you can't erase the lines post painting which is why a lot of the lines I have already erased if you however use watercolor pencils watercolor pencils would be better because then you can kind of blend it back into your painting things to think about once I've done the initial base coat I'm gonna start going in with the darker pigments I'm going to go back with a smaller brush for this one as you can see it's really fun you just kind of put the brush in one little area and all of a sudden the color just kind of like blends Blends into the water which is such a fun effect to do and if you want to try playing around with this highly recommend doing it on some watercolor paper and just kind of like putting some water somewhere and then just seeing the pigment just blend right into the page super fun to watch definitely a fun activity to do especially if you're feeling a little bit overwhelmed by the day or a little bit stressed out I think it's a really relaxing activity to do now one thing that is kind of important about painting this octopus is because there are so many tentacles and they overlap a lot I really wanted things to dry fast so I do occasionally dab it with a tissue so that it dries faster. Technically this removes a lot of pigmentation so it's not really the thing that you want to be doing. I should be letting it dry completely and then going on with the next bits but again I'm impatient. Nothing new there. So once things start to dry I go in with other tentacles which is why I kind of alternate which tentacles I'm painting and when. <laughs> So now that we've done the painting, here is the final look and I'm going to write master to-do list on this left page. Now, the next sections are going to be very interesting because not only am I going to be repainting the same octopus multiple times, it's going to be interesting. But before we get there, let's do some other things first. I'm going to write out my laps for life and I'm going to track out the different little squares that I'm going to be adding on this particular page. So the things that I have to track here are obviously the money that I raise but also the laps that I am swimming. For this I'm going to do on one side laps that I've swum and money raised and I'm aiming this month to swim 31 kilometers over 31 days so that's right one kilometer a day so I figured I would track this by doing little rectangles and putting 31 days in those rectangles and then when I complete one kilometer I color it in and so on and so forth so this is what it looks like now, as you can see, I totally made a mistake when I was drawing everything out. Well, actually, no, you can't tell now, but I've done more than 31 boxes. So I'm gonna have to wipe those out later. Unfortunately, I only have a white jelly roll pen and it's not exactly white out. So I'm gonna use it as white out, but it doesn't really have the desired effect. But I digress, it's not very important. Anyway, once I've done my boxes, I'm going to write out the numbers, so 1 to 31, and then I'm going to move on to the money raised. For the money raised, I'm just going to have kind of like, what would you call it, like a a standard tracker, like a filler tracker. How would you call this? I'm not entirely sure. But basically I'm going to color in every time I hit 50 Australian dollars. And to date, I'm actually at 193 Australian dollars as I am filming this. So I'm already doing very, very well. So again, if you want to donate for this amazing cause, the link is down in the description below. Now, let's move on to the next part. I'm actually gonna flip all the way to the end of the March spread, which is going to be for my March review, because that is where I have drawn the next octopus. As you can see, there's a lot of movement on the page because I'm still confused as to how I'm going to be doing things, and it's all very, very confusing, but I think I've got the right approach, so let's get on to the painting. Again, the same technique, using a light wash of blue watercolor to put the base layer on first and then I'm going to go in with some darker pigments to add some more dimension to my octopus. Now again this one is copied yet again off Pinterest. I take no credit for any of these paintings. It's just the technique that I'm using but the form and shape of the octopus is totally copied off Pinterest. This octopus is really funky. I think she is really fun to look at and I again the techniques of using the watercolors to add some darker splashes in certain areas is really really fun. I've 
done that, I'm going to write review on the top and then I'm going to come back once it's dry to add in some more details. I'm kind of doing the eyes. Again, it's exactly like the painting that I found on Pinterest. And I'm going to add in a little bit of brown to the watercolor just so that I can darken the blue just a little bit. So it kind of goes to a darker, like a black color, not blue. Once I've done that, I'm going to move to painting the top octopus whose name is Stacy, I guess we've established. <laughs> Why do I even think of Stacy? Like, where did that name even come from? I don't even know a single person named Stacy. I don't think I've ever heard anyone's name called Stacy, but there you go, that's what's come up. <laughs> As you can see, there's pencil markings. So that's where I've set up my octopus to be. Now, every single page is gonna have a slightly different layout for the octopus, but it's all pretty much the same vibe. In the end, it's supposed to be the same octopus reflected on each page. So I'm just going to paint this side again, same technique. It's another day and now it's time to paint the same octopus again but on a different page so again I think that I'm just going to kind of fast forward through these clips because it's all the same thing and I don't know how interesting it is for people to rewatch me paint the exact same octopus three times or is it four I'm not entirely sure how many times I had to paint this but it's many times so yeah here we go so whilst I'm painting this and whilst I'm fast forwarding and time lapsing all of this process I figured I would just talk a little bit about my time in Mauritius I'm gonna be talking more about this in depth in my flip through of my travel journal video which has coming out later on this month once I finish editing things together but basically I've been diving pretty much every single day for the last two and a half months it's been insane I have never dived this much and for this long so it's really awesome to see how I started at the beginning and how I've progressed over the last couple of months. It's really awesome as well because you see different things every single day whilst you're diving, you interact with so many different people, with so many different life stories, and it's really cool to meet people who are interested fundamentally in the same activities that I am. Diving, to me, feels like an activity that not as many people participate in. Some people say it's like a rich man's sport because it's an expensive hobby. It's expensive to dive because you need to have your equipment and if you don't have your equipment you have to rent the equipment which can be expensive and especially coming from Australia, diving in Australia is very expensive but that's because life in Australia in general is very expensive. So all in all it's an expensive sport and I don't really know or I hadn't really known as many people or that many people who were into diving before and since I've been here it's been really nice meeting so many people who are into diving who come diving regularly who I've made friends with and it's really a very very pleasant experience. If you have any questions about diving in general please let me know down in the comments because I will cover those in my video of my travel journals. It would be nice if you had any questions or you are interested in diving or traveling or living abroad please let me know down in the comments because then I can answer them in my next video. Well actually I don't know if my travel journal is gonna be my next video but I think it will be. coming to the final section where I have to paint the octopus and it's just back on this Laps for Life page. I was a bit skeptical, I was like maybe I shouldn't paint it here but I had already committed to the whole thing so I figured I would do it anyway. As you can see everything has pretty much come together and that first octopus, Stacy, her name is <laughs> at the top, is my favourite one of the entire series and all of my spreads that I've done for March. Here is a quick close up of me doing specific details on the octopus, so specifically the eyes. I won't say that I've nailed the eyes, I think they're very abstract, but I think you understand the idea and what it's supposed to represent, so that's at least a good thing. <laughs> So let's finally come back to some things that are a little bit more necessary for a bullet journal, which is like actual bullets and stuff. And on my master to-do list, I'm going to split my page in three different rows for three different categories in my life that I will be tracking throughout March. Sadly, I'm taking the fourth one out because the fourth one was diving as I will no longer be diving in Canberra. Actually, one goal that I do have for diving is to kind of find like a diving group in Canberra. I mean, obviously not Canberra because you can't go diving in Canberra unless you go diving in Lake Burley Griffin but <laughs> 
not much to see there. I also frequent the south coast quite often and I know that there's a bit of diving there so I'm hoping to explore the dive areas down that way to see if I can go diving and meet some people who like diving as well because that would be really cool. But anyway the categories that I have for my master to-do list for the moment are going to be personal, Archer and Olive because I am still an Archer and Olive ambassador. Use code VERO10 for 10% off by the way. And for work. Moving back onto my monthly log, I'm just adding the initials for the days of the week at the top of my calendar. And now I'm going to add in the habits that I'm going to track. I've also since then added the webbing between the tentacles for my octopus. I think I should bring them down a little bit further. And then the habits that I'm going to be tracking for the month of March. So I want to get back into yoga. I want to practice my handstands. I'll obviously be swimming pretty much every day. I want to stop eating meat again. So whilst I've been in Mauritius, I've been eating a lot more meat than usual because I've been with the family and if you know you'd know if you have an asian family you know that you cannot come to mauritius and not eat meat like you have to have a very strong will and offend your family members <laughs> i'm kidding i'm not obviously strong-willed enough to not eat meat with the family so there you go also i was like mm, what other habits can i track this month to help me with that i flip back to my goals page at the beginning of my bullet journal just to see if there's anything that i have in my goals that i need to be tracking for and so if you have seen my 2023 bullet journal setup actually no it was my planning for the future what's the title of that video anyway i'll link it here if you've seen that video you'll know that i was setting up my goals and my intentions for 2023 by looking at that spread or looking at that page i can actually help myself and determine what specific habits i need to be tracking to stay on top of my goals one of the things i'm filling in is my laps for life tracker so the money raised as i said i have already raised 193 dollars at the time of filming and so that's really exciting to fill that in finally we're coming to my review page and as you know on my review page i track the positive emotions as well as the negative emotions every single month then i'm also going to check how many instagram followers i have how many youtube followers i have this month since basically since i've been in mauritius i have totally fallen off instagram youtube sort of as well i just have no desire to post on social media because i'm just having so much fun diving which if you were me i think you would agree right but anyway i am going to be back to posting a little bit more regularly anyway so other things is movies series and music i have gotten back into listening to music recently which i hadn't realized that I was kind of into but I guess I'm back into that now so that's kind of cool I guess and then I'm just going to write week nine at the top of the first page because I will be using rolling weeklies for the month of March because I think that's just the most accurate way that I'll be organizing my life for March and that's done oh and then I'm just gonna write in some little fun things that are happening in March so back in Australia on the 1st of March and my 25th birthday which is on the 31st of March I am turning 25 um I guess you could say quarter life crisis <laughs> no 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 but 25 is a big year I think it's a big one for me so I'm kind of excited kind of nervous kind of anxious kind of happy but yeah that's pretty much it anyway let's go for the final flip through for March. Here we have my cover page. Absolutely love how this turned out, by the way. Insane. We have my monthly log and my habit tracker, my master to do list, my laps for life. So, again, if you want to donate, link is down there. And here we have a flip through of what the octopus looks like on every single page. So as you can see, every time you flip the page, you see the same two octopus everywhere. And I think it looks amazing. And there we have it. I hope you've enjoyed this video. As you can see, I'm clearly in a different location. I'm still a bit sick, but I will be back in Australia very shortly and I will be editing my travel journal flip through, including kind of like a travel style vlog without the talking, more like underwater videos of my dives. So I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.